Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Hypermind Modded. Today we're going to be building an automatic wither killing station here in this reinforced obsidian box. Are you ready? Let's get started. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it correct. We are going to build an automatic wither killing station, and it's going to be in this box, well, that we can go into right here, but let's take a look at it from out here. When I was showing you the Orberry farm, I did make note of this monstrosity down here, and uh, I said, don't worry about it, we're going to get to it. Well, today we're going to get to it. That's right. So we're going to be putting a wither killing station inside the reinforced obsidian. Why are we doing that? Well, because reinforced obsidian is wither proof. So that's why we're doing that down there. Couple layers of containment for them just in case they happen to get out. But before we get into today's project, let's take a little progress report. So last time we were together, we built this spawner room. And I had all of my user interface up here on the top, which is hardly, hardly what you want in a professional looking base. And so what I've done is uh, I've hidden some, uh, haven't really hidden it, but you can see the conduit right here, the redstone conduit. I've got it covered with cable or conduit facades. And now you can see the user interface right here. I'm using some fancy signs and I've put mob souls in for each of them. So... Here on the bottom is the Blizz spawner right there. You see that turn on? Okay. We don't really care for that for the moment. And then up here is the Wither Skeleton spawner. So there you go. That's the user interface for the spawner room. And you should be able to easily toggle all the switches. But for now, the next thing we're going to be doing is coming in and taking a look at our supplies. We're going to need uh, a pattern, and I need to put this in here as well. What we're going to do is we're going to be driving Nether Star creation through the ME Auto Crafting or Applied Energistics Auto Crafting, and for that we need a process a processing pattern. So our output is going to be a Wither Star or Nether Star, four Soul Sand and three wither skeleton skulls right there. And so I can make a pattern. We're going to put this in our inventory for now. Just clear this out and we'll throw all of these into the ME system. And what we're gonna do is put the encoding pattern right here. And uh, yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab all of this stuff and we're gonna take it down to our work area Hopefully I have enough room. Do I have enough room? Not quite. Let's see if we can put something away in the project bag. There we go. Put that like so. And uh, I probably need to put one more thing in the project bag. How about a chest? And then right here, we're going to grab, uh, what is it? We need a crafting station just to make things a little bit easier. There we go. All right, let's go down to our project area and we'll kind of get the idea here. So this is a fully enclosed reinforced obsidian uh, bunker, uh, even below the elevator block here. Uh, I'm not gonna pop that open because then, uh, I'm, well, my inventory's full. So, um, so yeah, what we're gonna do is maybe throw this up here and this yeah like so we can start getting rid of some of this this stuff right here clearing out our inventory making it a little bit oh yeah that's the pattern like so yeah so look under there and you can see that we've got reinforced obsidian even right there yes i'm being a little paranoid but i want to make sure that we don't run into any problems i don't want a wither on the loose in my base so we're going to keep them in here i hope i've got the right uh, right dimensions for this thing but what i'm going to do is i'm going to build the machine we're going to be using a mix of mistcraft steve's factory manager and draconic evolution and Applied Energistics 2, 
Oh, well, that's some of the craziest things that you can do here in uh, in FTB. We're going to be pulling all of these items together and then uh, making a machine. But I'm going to have to do that off camera. I can't quite build it from memory uh, with you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off camera real quick, build this thing, bring you back, and show you kind of how the machine's going to function together. And then we'll go from there. All right. So I will see you in just a moment. Well, it's certainly got a little bit more crowded in here since the last time we were together. So let's take a quick tour about all of the changes. Let me pull out... Do I have it? Yes, the precision sledgehammer. We're going to need that in just a moment. So uh, one by one, this is going to be the room where the wither ends up. Okay, and you might be wondering, how does he get in there? We'll see this in just a moment. And uh, for those on Hypermine, this might seem familiar because this is the same design that Tio Lone Wolf is using in his base. It's just a little more compact so that I can use Steve's factory manager to drive the whole thing. But uh, yeah, I, I went over to his base, took a look around, tried to figure it out, and just picked his brain for a little bit. And uh, yeah, so so I got some tips and tricks from him. So we're going to be copying that same design. And so I'm going to try and explain it to you. Uh, with the little twists and turns that I've got set up for it as well. So first things first, we are driving this from the ME system and we've got the interface down here. It's got a pattern. Remember that pattern that we created? Yeah, so we got the pattern in there for creating one nether star from four soul sand and three wither skeleton skulls. And to drive the ME interface, we need a hookup to our ME network. And I wanted this to be a completely self-contained box, so no cables or anything going in or out. And the way we do that is with a quantum link chamber. And big thanks to Tick, he had some extra stuff available. And so he gave me a quantum, uh, what is this, singularity. And he also gave me the whole setup here. So including the link chamber and the quantum rings. So I've got that set up. There's another one over in the ME system up in the controller, and then the two singularities, one in this side and one in the other side, and that gives us kind of a magic wireless type connection. Can't really explain it to you. It, uh, it's just something that's in the Applied Energistics 2 mod. We're powering it with an energy acceptor, and we're getting the power out of our standard network here, Power Plus. And that Tesseract is also driving this mob grinder, which we're going to be using to kill the wither. Now this Tesseract is set up for sending fluids because we're going to be grabbing the essence that we get off of each kill using the sewer. You see we've got 10 upgrade. Let's just take a look with the sledgehammer here. And that shows the radius of the sewer. That gives us enough space to cover the entire floor in here so we can make sure that we get everything. All right, from that point, that gives us the input, and uh, that should be good. I've also added a crafting terminal just in case we need to do some crafting down here, but for the most part, that's the input. Now from this point, the ME interface is going to put the soul sand and skulls into this chest. And then what we're going to do is use Steve's factory manager to move those things around. First of which is into the spawning chamber. So we've got some block gates. You can see in the Wayla up top, we've got advanced cable clusters and then block gates inside those cable clusters. So these are functioning as inventory cables and as block gates. We've used those for the fortunable processing over in the ore processing in the smithy. And we're going to be using those to place the soul sand. You can see the arrangement right there, four in a T. And then we're going to use the ones on top to place the skulls down on top of the placed soul sand. And then right here at the bottom, we've got a mistcraft portal. Or, well, it's not a portal yet. We need to create that and get that set up. And then we've got Steve's factory manager, a little inventory manager running the whole thing. And that's also pulling from an item valve, which is going to grab all of the drops from the wither kills. So let's take a look at how to set up the Mistcraft portal. We need to create a linking book and we need an intra-linking page. And that's 
pretty simple to get. Just use your standard inkwell, throw some, uh, what are they, bottles of enchanting in there, and you should be able to get an interlinking page. And now we've got an unlinked linking book. And what we want to do is make sure that it goes to the exact center, Let's see if we can get in here, exact center block of this area right here. So we will now right click on the book and that should tie it to that exact spot right there. And then we can come over to the portal, place it in the book receptacle right here. And there we go, that opens up a portal. What we're gonna do is a little experiment. I'm gonna put everything in soul bound or in a soul bound spot. One thing that's not soul bound is these traveler's gloves. I've lost those a couple times due to forgetting about them. And we're going to test this portal. Are you ready? There we go. So we end up right there in the middle of that box. And so what's going to happen is once we set up the inventory manager to create the wither, when the wither gets created, he's going to drop into the portal and end up right here. And then the grinder is going to uh, have at him. So the next thing we got to do is fill in the flow chart, right? So I'm going to do that off camera and I'll bring you back once I get that done. Ladies and gentlemen, as with most of the Steve's factory manager type builds, a lot of the work has been on the out or inside rather than the outside. So we've got this structure here, but what I've done is I've taken care of the flow chart on the inside here. So just to give you an idea of some of the organization here, what I've done is I've put a number of variables together that represent the different pieces that I'm really looking to control here. So one of them is the input and that's going to be the chest. And so we've got that in the white variable and the output we've got as the ME interface and that's going to be here in the orange. The skulls, this is a collection of block gates and that's where the skulls are going to be placed from the body that's where the soul sand is going to be replaced from again a set of block gates and then we've got items and this is going to be the item valve below the wither killing area and then an index and this is going to be for the for each loop and there's nothing attached to it right now we've just got a single variable and that's it's empty so that the for each loop can just place the next the the next uh, item into there so we'll see that in just a moment. You can see a little bit of the setup here. We've got two groups. We've got the group for building a wither and then the group for getting the items. We'll take a look at these in turn. The first one here is the build wither. It looks kind of complicated. And I'll, I'll have to tell you, I did get most of this done on my own. I tried to work it out without running to TO and to see what he had. So I had two for each loops going one for the body, placing all the soul sand from the different block gates. And then I had the skulls going. The problem is that the way Steve's factory manager works, um, the skulls were getting placed almost at the same time as the soul sand. And that led to some issues, sometimes with the wither not building correctly, so we wouldn't actually have this thing going. So what, uh, what I ended up doing is I took a look at what T.O. had set up, and he's got this for each loop leading into a for each loop with a delay trigger of five ticks in between. So this makes sure that all of the soul sand is placed and then all of the skulls are placed. And the way that all of this goes down is we first check in our input to make sure we have the required amount of stuff. So we're going to need four soul sand. Okay. And then let's close that and take a look at the skulls. We need three skulls. So once we've got those prerequisites in place, then we will continue. See, we got on the true, on the false part, we just don't do anything, and this thing just keeps waiting. So then we go into a for each loop, we go through each of the soul sand block gates, and we grab a piece of soul sand from the input. You can see right here, we've got the input selected. I want to make sure that it does have some soul sand and that the block gate does not have soul sand. Okay, right there. So we're going to take a look and we're using the index because that's in the for each loop. Make sure that it does not have soul sand. So we're going on the false part this time. Then we grab one soul sand from the input 
and then we place that in the block gate. And there we go, rinse and repeat until all four block gates have placed something. Then delay trigger again and go into the for each loop for the skulls. Kind of the same thing, but with skulls and with a different set of block gates, but overall same kind of deal. All right, so what happens is the wither will get spawned. It hits this mistcraft portal right here, gets transported over to here. The Draconic Evolution grinder then takes care of it, makes quick work of it. We'll see that in just a moment. What we will do is take a look at the get items. So we've got, it's not as complicated as the wither building, but it's, you know, it's still worth a look. What we're going to do is we split up once we come in from the trigger and we're going to be taking two different outputs. For those of you that don't know, the wither will drop a, a number of different items, one of which in particular we're after is the nether star, and one is something called a division sigil, and we used that a few episodes ago to get the builder's wand. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our items, so right there, using the variables again, I understand the wisdom there, we're going to blacklist the division sigil. So this is saying get everything except division sigils sends that to the output. The next piece, what do we do with the division sigils? Well, we will grab them, but we're going to process them slightly differently. Still, same thing, getting the items, and then we're going to whitelist this time, division sigil, and then we run that into a crafter, because you can see that you can get some, some amount of iron ingots out of a division sigil. We don't need that many hanging about, so I, I only need one or two two at the max division sigils activated. Everything else we can just throw away. So we're going to turn those into iron because, you know, everybody needs iron. So there we go. So we run that crafter, send all of the results of that into the output. So that you meet chest. So there we go. That's a way of, of making withers through Steve's factory manager. And we've got it hooked up to our AE system. So what's going to happen? The Ingredients are going to come in from the ME interface to this chest. So the interface automatically pushes the soul sand and skulls into the chest. Steve's factory manager picks it up and then pushes a nether star back out to complete the process. And so what we can do, and hopefully, let's just make sure our sounds are turned down. Got hostile creatures down. Okay, and I'll take a little bit of a hit here. And you can see I've pulled all the nether stars out already and what we will do is just say hey I want another star and the ME controller has the recipe for that or the interface has the recipe for that so let's just craft one for now there we go see it made the wither and you can see the wither kind of juicing up there in the top listen for it it's gonna explode it might hit me over here too we are pretty close to it there we go and it's done. That's it. That's how fast the Draconic Evolution spawner works. Um, I don't want to get that close. It is rather loud. But let's do a couple at a time just so you can see that process. So let's do more than one. How about five? We'll do five. So you can see that process. Okay. See it? You see him going through there? So we've got five withers going at the same time. And it gets pretty noisy. And it does take a little bit of health since we are close enough. It keeps everything from getting destroyed, but you still take a little bit of explosion damage. So uh, my armor is fairly good on that. So not a problem there. Yeah. Anyway, so now we have, we should have, five more nether stars in here. So let's take a look. Sure enough, there we go. And we can throw these back in and Bob's your uncle. So that's how to do automated wither killing with Steve's factory manager. And once again, we see the crazy... Ooh, I uh, just had something mess up there. Let's go back here. Um, yeah, software update messed up. So hope I'll see if I can cut that out. But there we go. Uh, that's how to do automated wither killing. And we've got oh, tons, tons of mods here. We've got Ender IO. Thermal Expansion, Draconic Evolution, Applied Energistics, Steve's Factory Manager, Mistcraft. This is Ender.io. Yeah. 
Lots, lots of cool stuff, lots of crazy stuff. And that's just some of the stuff you can do in a kitchen sink type mod pack like FTB Infinity Evolved. But that's going to be it for now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for taking a little bit of time out of your day to share with me. I hope that you have at least been entertained, but hopefully inspired for your own builds. And if you have, send me a screenshot. I'd love to see them. I'd love to see what you're working on. But that's going to be it for now. Join me next time as we, at this point, you know, I don't know. We've still got some more decorating to do. And, oh, you know what? I need some emeralds. I need automated emeralds. So we'll see if we can figure out a way to automate emerald production. All right? So, anyway, that's it for now. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.